Well, thank you for tuning in. This is Elaine, Whiskey Alpha 6 Uniform Bravo Echo, and I'm at the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center for Amtec Day. So I thought I'd take a minute and give you a little walk around of what we do up here. This is basically amateur radio people that want to play with uh, radio equipment. We bring out uh, radios and antennas, and we have technical talks in the uh, auditorium. And there's a big crowd here today. Greetings, Art Links. If you want to introduce yourself, I'm doing a video for YouTube. I'm Bonnie KQ6XA, and this is my portable radio. It's a automatic link establishment radio. It's called uh, ICOM ICF7000, and it makes gobble gobble sounds gobble, of gobble, ALE. Gobble. And all I got to do is make a call, and now it's sounding, it's sending digital signals out over HF. We can talk to other hams who have the same sort of system. And Bonnie has this in a little, looks like a Pelican case. This is a Pelican waterproof case, flip top box with a handle on top of it. And uh, it's fully waterproof and submersible. So I can go anywhere with my ALE radio and operate HF. Even if I'm in a submarine. <laughs> cool. And the door is open. The screen door is open. All right. Well, I'm going to wander around with my camera here and okay. get some more shots of equipment. I think it all makes sense. Somebody calling you back? No, it's, it's sounding automatically now. Okay. So I just need to make sure I'm really going to So I'm looking at your software you're using here, and um, I was thinking about ordering Mixed W, uh -huh. and I noticed you, you have something different that has a really nice display that shows the, uh, the channel frequency there. You're talking about this display? Yeah. yeah. It's called Kokomo. Yeah. Do you have a Mac? No, I have a uh, an IBM okay, PC. Yeah. Is, this, is it available for for PC? I don't think it's available for PC. Okay. I'm doing a video for YouTube here. Oh, you are. So if you'd like to introduce yourself and tell me about your equipment. Um, my name is Richard. Um, call sign is Kilo Golf Six Yankee Echo Mike, and uh, I'm here at Amtec Day at uh, Stanford Linear Accelerator. Uh, I have a Macintosh laptop connected to a Yasu uh, 847D. Are you? <clears throat> and I'm running uh, OTTY at the moment. I'm listening to RTTY okay. and. Uh, Looking for signals to come up on the uh, on the on the band and then uh, listening to it. And that's all I have to say right now. <laughs> okay, cool. This is an FT817, isn't it? No, this is the 857D. 857D. Yeah. Wow. I I thought about buying this one versus the 847, but I wanted to be able to use it. As part of my base station equipment? Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, it's underwater right here. Yeah, it's a nice small rig. Yeah, I'm real happy with it. This is, this is my only rig, and I don't have a... I can set it up at home with a portable antenna or set it up in the... In the as a comparison, there's a, a water bottle to show how small this radio is. Yeah. That would be great for putting it in a backpack and operating the desk with a mobile. Well, you might want to uh, check out the weight on that first because it's pretty heavy. Oops, I just bumped a button. Yeah. Ooh, that is heavy. Yeah, it's, it's, wow. it's a goodly amount. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, we'll get back to. Uh... Fast with that setback? 100 bucks. It's a nice little setup. Yeah. Okay, 
Or is that just one? Sorry. That does not look like a buddy pole, is it? It yeah. is. It's, it's it the is newer a... version of the buddy pole. And what's yeah. better with the newer version? Well, they've gone to a molded coil instead of machined. Okay. And they've redesigned the center T section. Okay. Is it backward so, compatible with the with the other? Yeah, it's all backwards stuff? compatible. Everything's uh, modular. You know, all the all the. 3824 fittings yeah. are all compatible with mobile antennas and stuff. Cool. Hey, do you have an uh, antenna analyzer? <laughs> yeah. Want me to bring it out? Yeah. Sure. Uh, analyzer will tell you the SWR on any, any HF frequency mm -hmm. and tell you the resistance, uh, the impedance of the antenna. So, <clears throat> we're going to change the frequency here and find out the resonant point. You see, the SWR went down to mm -hmm. very it's low. It's resonant down at 13.9. 13.9. Mm -hmm. So, if you were up at uh, 14, the dot 2 would be about 3 to 1. Or two to one higher, or higher like that. So what we need to do, since it's resonant, it has a lower SWR at the lower frequency. Mm -hmm. That means we need to shorten the tip a little. So the one which is already shortened, or uh, try shortening that one on that side, with maybe uh, three inches, six or seven centimeters, five centimeters. Okay, see, we're resonant here now, 14,150. That's better. Mm -hmm. But at our resonant frequency, the lowest SWR is not down to 1 to 1. So, since this is an offset feed, that means it's different on each side. So Probably what we should do. Shorten the other side a little bit. Shorten this one and lengthen that one on that side. I see. The same amount of, right? Yeah. So like this. And the same amount. And there. lengthen that one, yes. Yeah. Doing a little NVIS here? <laughs> Very NVIS. Very NVIS. Are you envious? Uh, NV, am I envious of NVIS? Uh, no. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, see, now it's much lower. <laughs> SWR. Oh, sorry, but we're up at 143.
Arthur, Arthur. A work of art. Brilliant. Oh, what, what was that about? That was about a uh, minute and a half. 